Today on Houston Life, actress Noemi Gonzalez, who plays Suzette Quintanilla on Selena, the series, is chatting all about the Netflix hit. Plus, a high school sweetheart love story. We speak with the author of Hometown Boy about writing her first book. And a tale of two Chinatowns. Local entrepreneur Thomas Wynn discusses the importance of Asian businesses right here in town. And we are live at the first ever summer auto show happening at NRG Center, featuring some pretty cool new rides. All that and more happening right now on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC 2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Houston Life. It's Wednesday, May 19th. I'm Courtney Savala. Hi, Courtney. Hi, everyone. I'm Derek Shore. So glad to have you with us and so glad we were able to make it to work safely in this really intense weather. Did you see the lightning last night? Oh, did I see it? Of course. It was a total show. I don't know if I've ever seen such rapid fire lightning strikes. And because we are currently in that high rise downtown, we had a view of the oh, whole city as gorgeous. the storm rolled in. But it was also kind of um, unsettling to see all the places and all the buildings things that are just sort of routinely struck by lightning like we no big deal. We were completely glued to the television. Of course, Frank has been working around the clock and one of the things that Orlando, both boys, Connor and AJ meet, we were all like, "Hum, I'm so did he just say 4,000 lightning strikes in the last 15 minutes? Yeah. It was unbelievable. Well, believe it because it happened, right? But you know, my heart goes out to so many of my Houstonian friends who have family over in Lake oh, Charles and in so many parts of Louisiana. It's absolutely gut wrenching to see people's homes and cars getting washed away. I and uh, I can't believe it's early May and here we are already. I know our storms are definitely intensifying. We knew it was coming. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Frank Billingsley. Oh, yeah. standing by with the latest. It's great to see you. I know you've been working around the clock, Frank. I'll tell you, that thunder was something, wasn't yes. it? Yes. Oh, yeah. We still can't find the dog. I mean, it's... Oh, no. <laughs> Under the bed. That's a I joke, think, right? I don't think Ocean's anybody okay. in Houston, Texas slept last night. No. Uh, Maybe for 30 minutes and... <laughs> uh, anyway... I have no lightning on the map right now for us, so that's at least some good news. You can see there's a southwest uh, Houston city cam. Gray skies, some water on the road, same in Galveston, but not a lot. We're seeing a few showers continuing to push across, but the last six hours you'd be hard-pressed to find more than a quarter of an inch, and in the last hour maybe four-tenths. Now, it's raining down to the south, and there are, in fact, some aerial flood advisories that continue where they've had as much as a foot of rain over the last 24 hours. We'll check that out coming up in 30 minutes. There's still that uh, flood watch that's in effect. And in fact, it was until 7 a.m. tomorrow. Now it's until 1 p.m. tomorrow. So this is why all of these rain showers down in the Gulf and down to our south, and those do have lightning, and they are dropping some pretty good rain amounts. And you look at this, you can see a lot of this wants to move into Louisiana, but not all of it. Some of it wants to move right on in to the Gulf, and then some of it wants to move our way. So we'll sort it all out coming up and put a tracker on that and talk about what the future holds for tonight, Thursday, and Friday, and when we finally dry out. Oh, yeah. Let's hope it's soon, Franklin. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Thanks for keeping an eye on it for us. Hopefully everyone can stay safe as well. Yes, please. All right, we'll see you in a bit. Okay, so speaking of weather, I feel like maybe I'm imagining all of this, but last night before the storm came in, I started sort of aching. Oh, yeah, joint my, pain, right? Yeah, my body started hurting, and I thought, okay, well, maybe this was from spending a weekend in Idaho where we were walking around on rocks and very uneven surfaces. No, you're 40. That's what happens now. <laughs> oh, it's going to rain. My back hurts. <laughs> Why do you hate me so much? I love you. Love you that you're finally you know, okay, 40. I, okay, yes, I have been 40 now for seven weeks. <laughs> Not that I'm counting. Very painful. But I'm serious. Before the no, storm it's true. Moment, I yeah. thought, okay, is this just a coincidence? So I went on my phone because I couldn't sleep because of the lightning show happening outside our window. So it turns out that even though there might not be super, super clear scientific evidence, a lot of people do experience more joint pain during a storm. And the theory is that because of the barometric pressure in the environment when a storm rolls in, that's why people might 
have those aches and pains. Sure. My sister Heather went in labor, yes. went into labor with her twin boys uh, during the middle of a really bad storm. And a lot of hospitals and doctors report that they do see an elevated number of people having babies it's during so storms. It's so true. It's so true. And I, I, look, I don't need a ton of scientific evidence. It happens to one person. I'm like, oh, that's why. It's the weather. Here comes the storm. I think it's also a wives' tale. I think we remember kind of, I didn't really grow up with my grandparents, but you would hear grandparents say, like, my knees are hurting. My, my, my arthritis is acting up it would start to rain I wonder if it's just an old wives tale though because one of the theories is that when there's bad weather people might be experiencing joint pain because they're just sort of sitting around inside their home they're, they're not tense. actually they're tensed up well maybe or maybe the storm yeah. like makes you nervous so you're tensely sitting inside instead of getting outdoors and moving your body so Orlando was out of town the last couple days and um, when I saw one of Frank's weather hits last night talking about you know here it comes 10 30 it's coming to hit us and I thought I have not panic bought anything. So I ran to Kroger at about nine o'clock last night, got me the double stuffed Oreos, some M&Ms, like, you know, I had, I'm, I'm ready. Cheez-Its, Cheeto puffs, I got it all. Because I didn't panic buy anything. So you need like the, the stuff that you need to get through for the weather. And then I got maybe something for dinner, but that was okay. But <laughs> speaking of the rain, so I was getting dressed today and I was trying to figure out what I'm gonna wear and you know, the shoes and the clothing. I liked what you chose. Oh, well, I'm I really like it. Thank you, and I'm hoping you and everyone else can help because I'm not sure I'm wearing this correctly. So I love this blouse. Is it backwards? I don't know. I love this blouse, and it is by one of my favorite local designers, Hunter Bell. Hunter, if you're watching, yes. please, girl, let me know what's going on here. I love Hunter and Bell. Head over to our Instagram page on Houston Life, and you all can help me too. So this is how I chose to wear it. Hang on, I got to take off my mic because I just have to show you guys something. Because like I don't. I don't know if what I, is I've going done on. this about 15 times what? today. I don't know if this is right. <laughs> Hang on. I don't know if it's right to change your clothes on live television. I'm changing my clothes. Oh. Simply, oh, I see. I don't, I don't know. Hang on. No, the tag. But the tag is right there. Here's the thing. So that's the look back. At, look at it. I yep. feel like mm. I can't wear it this way. I mean, you could. I put it on this way to begin with. No, that looks really backwards now. It does? I think maybe because it's kind of higher on your neck from what I can see in the monitors there. What do you think? I think it's backwards, but especially because the tag seems to be right there but under here's your the collar. Thing. It's sort of like, it's when, when the shirt is off, it's not really there. It's like off to the side, which makes me think that this is a dual purpose. It could be like a, one of those reversible things, but instead of inside out, it's just backwards. I don't know. Let me ask you something though. So the way you had it on just now, my mom and I recently had this conversation because know. about like bras, people put clip people, their- People, women, <laughs> put their bras on how? Whoever what? wears bras, like you, you clip it and then you turn it to the back. My question is, I mean, if, if the buttons go up the back, how are you doing, unless I, it's like special acrobatics, how do you actually button something that buttons down well, that's the what back made of me your think body? That it's, I button this in the front. So how did you button it in the back? Well, I put it on this way. And then you just took your arms out and spun it around. Well, because way. I thought this, I don't know if I'm wearing this, because how else am I buttoning it? Hunter Bell, if you're watching, could you please call our bat phone here at KPRC2 <laughs> and set the record straight? I need help. In many ways. <laughs> I walked right into that. You this is only an hour show, Courtney. I know. We can only solve so many problems. I'm very warm. I think I'm going to change back to the other way. During commercial break? During commercial break. I think you should do it now. But here's the thing. It is so beautiful. It truly is such a beautiful pattern. Is that black or is it deep, deep navy? Hunter? <laughs> Hunter? <laughs> I thought it was black, and now that you say it, maybe it is navy. Well, my... My jacket is black and yours looks a little bit blue. I don't know, y'all. I like to wear things what that match happening? my heart. Black. Black, cold, dead heart here. Mm. Well, it's beautiful whether it's backwards or not. And no one would ever know. I think you should wear it like that. Wear it like this? Sure. Because how are you buttoning it? If, I don't know. That was my question for That's you, dude. That's what I'm saying. Oh. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. First world problems, okay? Oh, boy, is my top on backwards or not? Still to come. My pants are on backwards. When's the last time you cleaned it's your true. coffee maker? It's not a joke. <laughs> they're backwards. You just can't see them because they're oh, below the desk. Isn't that a song? What? Anyway. Hmm. Um,
When was the last time you cleaned your coffee maker? I don't ever. A study reveals what germs could be brewing in your kitchen. Is this show just disgusting or what? And the Houston Auto Show is back at NRG Center this week. <laughs> Joe Sam is standing by with a look at what is new this year for drivers. Joe, how exciting it's happening in the summer. Hey, that's right, you guys. So this is the first time that they're doing this here. We're going to be telling you about all of the different makes and models of vehicles that they have happening here at NRG Center for the first ever Houston Summer Auto Show. You can already see all of the different models that we have behind and there's some unique experiences that we'll tell you about, too. All of that when Houston Life returns after a quick break. Okay, so this is a very, very important question, Courtney. How often do you clean your coffee maker? Uh, when it tells me to. There's like a button on my thing. If you use my, the filter a certain amount of times, it says clean coffee maker. Okay, how about coffee makers for regular people? I know. Because yours sounds really fancy. Never. Never? Okay, so you know, you, people have said you should descale your coffee makers. Descale. What does that mean? Like, like get rid of the hard water. Get rid of the hard water, like the buildup or like oh, whatever yeah. lime. So and I all had the a minerals. Keurig. I had a Keurig, and I okay. think you would do like water and vinegar or hot water. So I don't know, something like that. Yeah, because there's like a little bit of a tube, so that that goes through, and you can see when the tube gets nasty. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, are you following me? No. <laughs> okay, so in a. In a study, okay. <laughs> yeast. We love our studies. This is really common, okay, and it happens in about half of coffee pots out there. Yeast and mold settle into about half of all coffee machine water reservoirs that are tested, making it the fifth germiest item in kitchens and bathroom. And here's the other thing, too. A lot of people don't think about wiping down the, act, the handle, like if you have a traditional drip coffee pot, yeah. or the outside. Yes. So over the weekend, when my mom and I, after she broke her arm, we were just sort of sitting in this motel room in Idaho. It's very interesting. But we had a view of the gas station. It was lovely. Oh, very pretty. It was nice. And the coffee uh, machine. Oh, I know. You it used the coffee machine in the hotel? I know. And, you know, they... They say you're not supposed to use it in a hotel. It looked kind of nasty. So I did a couple cycles of just hot water before I brewed it. That, sh I'm sure, cleaned it really well. But you could use vinegar, though. Yeah. White vinegar cleans things so well. Everything. So do, do a couple cycles with white vinegar, and that should set you to go. I told this story on the show many times. My uh -oh. friend Jeannie Case, her husband has a deer lease. Oh. You know, the first season, the first time back at the deer lease, and she it's early, they make the coffee. And for people who don't know what a deer lease is, it's like a cabin yes. in the mountains? Yes, it's a cabin. And well, not necessarily in the mountains. It could just be in the hill country. Or, uh, I'm, you know. I'm asking for a city person. Yes. Okay, thank yes, you. Yes, it's your cabin. It's where you go hunt for things. And it was early. It's dark. You know, you get out there when it's dark. And so she's making her coffee. And all day long, she couldn't figure out why this coffee was so weird and kind of like filmy, had like a weird texture to it. She gets back to the Dear Lease about nine hours later and goes to clean the coffee pot. <laughs> and there was a mouse where you put the water. <laughs> That story never gets old. Never gets old. I still twitch when I even hear Jeannie's name because I feel bad for her. Oh, I love Jeannie. So she but... was drinking mouse juice. <laughs> Fur. <laughs> Would you, I wonder what'd you like? Uh, a latte, an espresso, mouse juice? All of it, please. Okay, we want to hear from you. What do you put off or neglect cleaning at home? Oh, this is a good one. Head over to our Houston Life TV Facebook page. Join the conversation. We're going to share some of your comments a little bit later on in the show. As always, they are super funny. How about the whole thing? How about the whole house? I would have thrown that entire coffee maker away. I would which have I'm thrown my sure, mouth away. <laughs> pretty sure Jeannie did. Okay, rev your engines and head down to NRG Center for the first ever Houston Summer Auto Show. I love the auto show. So much to see and do. Joe Sam is there now checking out some of the hot new rides they have on display. So, Joe, what have you seen so far? We saw some great things already. We're actually seeing some of our viewers telling you guys to say hello. That's what they're telling you everybody out there because they're already here at the Houston Auto Show. Rochelle is here as well, the executive vice president of the Houston Auto Show to tell us about some great things. We're checking out the Broncos right now. That's right, and we're so excited to have the auto show this year. It's great to be back and fill up energy with everything that is automotive and in a wonderful way. It and is. one of the highlights is definitely this Ford Bronco. <laughs> Everyone wants to get in it, see it, explore it, sit in it. I've gotten so many questions about sitting in the 
Bronco and you can. You can come here. They're going to show you how to take off the doors, how to retract the roof. This is the ultimate off-road vehicle. Wow. I mean, you really can just experience nature with that whole door coming off and I hear the top comes off too. That's right. You've got the retractable <laughs> roof as you can see on the version behind us. All the color options as well out displayed. So if you've ordered a Bronco and are waiting on it to come, this is the place to come check it out. How long is this going to be happening for people to come and see? So we're open today through Sunday, noon every day during the week, and 10 a.m. we open on the weekends. Tickets are $12 when you get here at the show, $10 online in advance, plus Ticketmaster fees. So check out everything on HoustonAutoShow.com. Okay, now we're just on the outside of the show floor. So inside, there's even more luxury vehicles, which is why I dressed up with my suit on today, because I'm ready to go see the Maseratis, the Lamborghinis. I'm trying to go and see them all. We just got in this morning <laughs> the McLaren oh. Artura, which is the new hybrid of the McLaren, $225,000 of oh, luxury. Wow. So there's plenty to see in all the luxury lines, as well as your traditional makes of Jeep, Dodge, Ram, Kia, Subaru, Toyota, Lexus, the whole, the whole lot. Everything that people can come and check out. He's still going at it. I mean, check out this incredible vehicle here, the Broncos. There's so much more that's happening here at the Easton Auto Show. The summer edition, first ever. We cannot wait for more people to come out and experience, and it's a good day to do so because it's inside. It's that's right. Indoors, so you can escape the rain and really come and check out some of these vehicles that you can put in your own driveway. Courtney and Derek, I'm going to get ready to head inside with Rochelle. She's going to stick around with us, and we're going to see what else we can experience talking about that experience when we come back here. All oh. right. Sounds great, Joe. Thanks. Yeah, beautiful vehicle as well. All right, so it is Wednesday, Courtney. Oh, you know what that means. Cheers. Cheers. In this week's Wine Club Wednesday, poured by HEB, we are tasting a deep, Inky mm. purple, it is kind of inky purple, Cabernet, worthy of, get this, Courtney, a gold medal from the 2021 Rodeo Uncorked International Wine Competition, one of uh, the most iconic events that happens every single year here in Houston. And it's one of our favorites as well. We are highlighting, you're taking a look at the label. This is Sageland's Dark Shadow Cabernet. Sageland's Dark Shadow is basically a smoky nose with accents of cherries and leather. Mm. I love it. I mean, it does have a beautiful smell to it. The taste, very dark fruit. This is light. It's not very heavy. You also get a little bit of vanilla spice and dark chocolate. And we're told this is a wonderful pairing by itself, like we're doing it, mm -hmm. or with blue cheese, a burger, short ribs, hard cheeses, cured meats, like a good charcuterie board, goat cheese, so something that's gonna stand up to the flavor. Also stuffed portobello mushrooms, which by the way, H-E-B has one of the best pre-made stuffed portobello mushrooms anywhere, hands down. I've gotta try it. And you just put them on the grill, put them in the oven, unbelievable. We love portobello portab mushrooms. So good. You know at Shake Shack you can get the portobello the burger. mushroom burger. Well, Tons you can of protein. Do the same thing with the ones at H-E-B. Same H -E thing at home. Okay, so if you're wondering where the wine is from, Columbia Valley, Washington is the spot. So a fun fact, mm. Sage Lens was established back in 1984. 1984. 1984. That was a very good year. They sourced Lovely. the finest grapes from all four corners of Columbia Valley. And uh, guess how much? Mm, I don't know. I didn't look, I don't know. I'd say like 20? 12 bucks. $12? 12 bucks, not bad, right? Oh, this is great. And what I love about this too, it's not a heavy red. This is great when the temperature starts to rise a little bit and you're a red lover. It's light enough, but it has a great body. We also drink red year round. I do too. So but this sometimes would be a great bottle hot. I love it. Plus, though. it has a screw top, which saves time, right? 12 bucks can't go wrong. If you'd like to join our Houston Life Wine Club poured by HEB, just visit our website to register. You're going to have access to exclusive giveaways. You'll even have a chance to be part of our virtual tastings, which we love too. We love doing the tastings with our viewers. So, cheers and sign up for our wine club. As a reminder, you can find today's featured wine at your local HEB. All right, we're going to shift gears now. Still ahead on Houston Life. Did you know Houston is home to two Chinatowns? We're going to discuss the significance and impact coming up. And after the break, I'm chatting with the author of a new book, Hometown Boy. Hear how she pulled inspiration from her own life. That and so much more when Houston Life returns. Welcome back. You know, a rainy day is a perfect time to curl up with a good book. And if you like a sweet, feel-good, small-town romance, then Hometown Boy is the book for you. Joining us now is the author, Audrey McClelland. Hi, Audrey. Welcome to Houston Life. 
Oh, thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. Before we get into the book, I wanted our viewers to get to learn a little bit more about you. You're a blogger, a mom of five. You've actually been blogging since 2005, so you're kind of like the OG of bloggers or the OG of in influencers before it was a thing. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I remember when I first started, everybody would ask me, you know, what do you do? And I used to say, well, I'm an online, I have an online journal. And then it evolved into, okay, I'm a blogger. And then I was a mom blogger and then a mommy blogger. And then all of a sudden influencer and then digital influencer. And then really look where we are now with social media. I never, ever thought it would catapult into what social media really is today. I always say to my kids, I started before YouTube. So that's how old mommy is. And that's how <laughs> legit you are. <laughs> well, let's talk about the kids because you have five kids, William 16, yes. Alexander 15, Benjamin 14, Henry 12, and finally the girl, right? Victoria yeah. is seven. So you're super busy. Um, we can't, you know, you were also named the Power Pack Moms and Nielsen's online Power Moms list, naming you one of the most influential moms online. What's your inspiration? I know your kids are most of it but where do you find the time as well you know it's funny when I first started out I really just said to my husband I wanted to be able to create something from nothing I wanted to create a business um, I needed to provide an income for our family because that's how you know we are and I just wanted to be present uh, for my family and so truly honestly Courtney I love that I get to create something new every single day. There's no day that's the same. And, you know, I'm sure as you know, with your job, you know, when you're passionate about something and I love with social media that honestly, I feel like every month there's something new. There's a new change. And I feel like I, I just love being at the forefront of that. Well, you're doing a wonderful job. Your, your page is incredible. Your blog is awesome. We just saw a picture of the cover of your book, Hometown Boy, which is about high school sweethearts you met and fell in love with your college sweetheart. I'm guessing a little bit of inspiration came from that. Well, it's funny. My husband keeps saying to me, who is this hometown boy? Do I have to find him? Like, who is this guy? Um, you know, the thing is, you know, I really, I had this idea of a story in my head for honestly over 20 years. And I was trying to figure out honestly, like how to tell this story. And I, and I thought of it because it always fascinates me when I hear that high school sweethearts are, have, have gotten married young and stayed together for like 50 years. And it just always fascinates me that at the end of the day, I feel like everybody has that one person in high school that they either had a huge crush on or truly dated. And if you kind of stop to think about it, what would happen if you stayed together or re-met 10 years later. It's so true. We recently did a story about next door neighbors that fell in love in middle school and fast forward 40 years, now they're getting married. So you went to Brown University, you had a degree in, um, is it business? Or you worked with Donna Karen, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I had a business degree and a theater arts degree. I moved to New York City and um, I worked for Donna Karen, the fashion designer there. Okay, so a little bit more inspiration in that Hometown Boy book yeah, as well. There you go, you're going to so start we have about, the <laughs> We have about 30 seconds left, Audrey. Do you plan on writing more books? I know this one just came out, but it sounds like yeah. it might be a series. Yeah, this is a series following four sisters, and it's such a small town sweet romance. I'm obsessed with Hallmark. I just remember saying to my husband, I watched so much of it, I should now be able to write it. So yes, the four books will be out in June, July, and August, and I hope people fall in love with the McKay sisters. Well, I can't wait to do it. You're such a sweetheart. Thank you so much for joining us today, and best of luck to you and the rest of the series. Uh, thank you so much, Courtney. I appreciate you taking the time. Absolutely. We'll see you soon. And to pick up a copy of your own of Hometown Boy, you can do so on Amazon. We will have a link on our website, HoustonLife.tv. Well, from a good book to a very good TV series, let's check in with Lauren Kelly. You know I'm up on both of these, Lauren. Oh, Love it. Girl, I know you so are. And I'm so excited for this because coming up, I am chatting with Noemi Gonzalez from the Netflix hit Selena the Series. She's talking all about her role as Suzette Quintanilla, what it was like playing those iconic songs, wearing those bedazzled costumes. We'll take a look at that and we'll get a check of what's coming up on the news at four, including a look at your forecast and how it could affect your commute. Ooh, it's hazy out there. Houston Life is back in just two minutes. Welcome back to Houston Live. Courtney and Derek back with you on this Wednesday at 3.30. 3.30 indeed. Glad to have you with us. Earlier in today's show, we asked you, what do you put off or maybe neglect cleaning at home? 
the whole house, perhaps. Everything. <laughs> Here's some of what you had to say. We're going to start with Barbara. It used to be baseboards, ceiling fans, and blinds, but then I got cataract surgery and was shocked. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they looked okay. Barbara, mm -hmm. one reason why my mom doesn't want to do it is she said that exact thing. Then I'll see how dirty my, my house, house is. is. That is hilarious. Okay, Cynthia writes in, oh, baseboards. I can't get down and back up to do it. You know what? I recommend a little, like, strong vacuum with a long attachment. Works every time. Uh, Sandra writes in, everything, mostly <laughs> clothes. I hate having to fold them and put them up. Same. Yes. That's the thing. I don't mind putting them in the dryers, getting them out. Uh, <laughs> Penny writes, my dirty mouth. I need to clean up my cussing. <laughs> Penny, come hang, hang out with me. Ooh. You sound like a lot of fun. Mine is the front-loading washing machine. Oh. I, I know you're supposed to clean that at some point. Oh, you mean the ring inside? Or the act, like, aren't you supposed to sanitize your washing, your, your machine? With baking soda, maybe? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. I mean, I just consider it's washed. I mean, you're washing it with clothes it's in it. It's a washing machine. How could it be dirty? Right? I don't know. Okay, now let's check in with Keith, Christine, and Frank for a look at what's coming up at the top of the hour. I know you all are super busy, but... We have these difficult questions oh, we yeah. need answered. Oh, we know, yeah. Um, I think we'll get our cleaning uh, advice from, from another show, perhaps. But we, we, we love the effort, though. No, I, I mean, you guys. Penny. Yeah, at least you guys have good ideas. Penny keeping it real, like, listen. I got a dirty mouth. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, love it. I love it. I'm bad at the uh, at, at the filter air filters and yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm, uh, oh that's and you know a what? bad and one. And in Houston too, ours get so dirty. Yeah. I swear we're we're replacing them two to three months tops is how last how long they last. Yeah, yep. yeah. I'm not good at, at getting those, so I have to set reminders. You know, so yeah. That, yeah. Well, it gets done. <laughs> At some point, yes. Now I'm thinking about all the things that I should be cleaning more frequently. I know, me and too. Like, if My we really list knew, gets we're longer. probably really a lot dirtier than we think. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll digress. Frank, um, how's it looking out there today? I recycle, okay? Okay, good. That's a, that's I mean, a that's start. That's a start. Yes. There you Same. go. Baby steps. Yes. I'm clean ish. <laughs> clean ish. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, we're in partnership with the Harris County Flood Control District. These are some Bayou and Stream status right now. The yellow, then there's a lot of those has some flooding potential. The red flooding is likely, so I wanted to show you some of those. You can see up 290. Little Cypress Creek at Becker, Mound Creek at FM 362 to the north, Three Mile Creek, and then Mill Creek at FM 1486, and over here, Peach Creek in Montgomery County at FM 2090. So we'll keep abreast of that. In the meantime, it's really not too bad today for the Houston area. A lot of cloud cover, warm temperatures, 71 to 75. And you can see the rain shield here. Not too impressive. If you look at the rain amounts over the last six hours, you'd be hard pressed to find more than a tenth of an inch. It's just not that much for us. It's been more active down to the south, especially around Victoria, where a flood warning continues until four o'clock. And you can see even into parts of Jackson and Matagorda County and Brazoria County, we have some aerial flood advisories. Y'all been hit hard as much as a foot of rain over the last 24 hours. So even an inch of rain down there is going to cause a big issue. The flood watch has been extended from seven o'clock tomorrow morning to 1 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. So keep that in mind. The big question is all of this rain. Right now, I think I have pretty good news. I think most of this is going to miss us, and what does come our way should not be too much on the heavy side. So here's the future cast. You can see, especially from Houston to the coast, this is through 7 o'clock, chance of showers, but a lot of this stays out over the Gulf where it belongs. And then you can see through 10, 11 o'clock, this starts to move off to our north. So overnight, some of our northern counties could see some fairly healthy showers moving through there. All told, one to three inches of rain is about what we're looking at as we go into tonight. Maybe one to two, but I, some of you may see a little more. But the threat mostly is uh, south of I-10, and one inch rain, uh, one inch per hour rain rates, you really need two inches per hour to cause problems. And one inch per hour is inconvenient, but w for some of you, if you've had flooding, that could be a problem. So the flood risk has gone from moderate to slight. So that's at least some good news as we head into the 4 o'clock. I'll have your full forecast coming up. All right, sure is, Frank. Thank you. And here's a look at the other stories we're covering for you at 4 o'clock this afternoon. It's been a contentious topic for years now here in the city of Houston, giving firefighters a raise. Just a short time ago, Mayor Sylvester Turner announced the raises. And coming up at 4 o'clock, how much more firefighters are going to be paid in our city and for how long? Plus, it is video that is going to bring chills down the spine of any parent. 
apparent. It is security camera footage of an attempted abduction of an 11 year old girl from a school bus stop. What we're learning about the suspect in this case. Yeah, scary video there. And also at four o'clock, Houston area high school students getting a big payout for their hard work. Details on the smartphone app they created and its life saving purpose. We're also going to find out how much money they won for their school as a result of that project. So, so something to be proud of there. Some smart right. kids there in yeah. there earning some green. Absolutely. Yeah, Payday. Cool. Well, they say that half the jobs of tomorrow yes. don't even exist today. So it's good to see these young entrepreneurs. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, guys, we'll see you at the top of the hour. Sounds good. Well, Selena, the series follows late Tejano singer Selena Quintanilla and her rise to fame with her family right by her side. Yeah, Lauren Kelly got to chat with actress Noemi Gonzalez about the new Netflix hit. That is right. Noemi plays the role of Suzette Quintanilla, Selena's devoted sister and drummer in the band. And she's taking us behind the scenes of the iconic music, costumes, and exciting moments she found out she got the part. Grammy nominations just came out. We just wanted to tell you before you heard. <sighs> okay. The live album was nominated. <laughs> what? Yes, it was. Yes. That was me. I was stoked. <laughs> I was um, beside myself. I was laying in bed, and then when they told me I had approval from the family, I was like, what? <laughs> it's a different level when you get cast by a casting director, but then when you're getting cast by Selena's family, they're like, yep, that's the girl. Different level, <gasps> right? A huge different level. I immediately was like, wait, Abraham knows who I am? Suzette knows who I am? I was like, hold on, hold a second. Like, what is my life? We are currently in part two of the series on Netflix right now. What was your favorite part? I know there's iconic music and there's iconic hair. All of this 90s nostalgia. What, what took you back the most? I think just seeing Selena's wardrobe around me, you know, there's a certain time in, in history where if you grew up at that time, you had this feeling of like 90s, uh, just poetry and Latino-ness that is Selena singing No Me Queda Mas at the San Antonio, you know, uh, train station. Um, that is Beady Beady Bum Bum with the floral skirt and the jean jacket. It just brought me back to that time and place where I think we all must felt. I mean, every, every time has its issues, but. I, I get like goosebumps thinking about those times, the, the hat, the bra, the pink outfit at the rodeo. I, I mean, those are literally iconic outfits and I'm sure there was other iconic props on set. Did you get to keep anything from the Selena set? <laughs> Are you, honestly, most often I have it and now I don't, but I, I have the drumsticks that I hand to the girl in part one because it was a very um, big moment for me to be in Tecate with the public, to be on location and, and to perform that all day, the drumming between Jody Watley and La Bamba. And I'd never seen my drumsticks so shredded. I also have a hat. I also have two, well, two hats. I have a plain hat and I have a bedazzled hat because how could you have um, gear from the set without it being bedazzled? So speaking of drums, Suzette Quintanilla was the drummer in the family. I, I want to know, were you a drummer prior to? Did you learn the drums for the show? I learned the drums for the show. I did not have any prior experience with the instrument and it was really fun. It was really a challenge. It was really humbling and it was all rock star vibes. Once I like got the swing of it, got the groove, um, we had help from our two instructors with Antonio Pontarelli and Kiko Bernessian, who um, were just so wonderful to me to guide me through this challenge because we definitely had 50 songs that were handed to us of like what was potential to be played. If I go to carry I'm gonna call you. <laughs> I know you're the best. We can do a Selena song and it would be like magic. <laughs> yes, I'll air drum for you. On <laughs> and I'll lip sync. <laughs> Noemi Gonzalez, thank you so much for your time and best of luck. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you so much. See you, Houston, Texas. Just embrace who you are. What a joy. And to catch more of my interview with Noemi, just log on to HoustonLife.tv. I want to learn the drums now, you guys. I've always wanted to do that and shred on the drums. Oh, my gosh. But her energy, I, right. I can see Suzette in her. Yes. It's really crazy. Absolutely. That's perfect reason she got cast. It's I also incredible, it. this series, the way they match the costumes Everything. and all of these iconic performances from Selena. Yes. It's still heartbreaking. I was a huge fan. For sure. Me too. For sure. Great interview. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks Lauren. Lauren. Still ahead on Houston Life, we are driving into some
summer with some pretty cool rides at the Houston Auto Show. Plus, we're chatting with local entrepreneur Thomas Wynn about the importance of supporting Asian-owned businesses in Houston. That's when Houston Life returns. Welcome back. We're continuing our celebration of Asian Pacific American Heritage Month with a candid conversation about the AAPI business community right here in Houston. Here to help us with this important and timely conversation, local entrepreneur and longtime friend of Houston Life, Thomas Wynn. Thomas, it's great to see you. And even if people don't immediately recognize your name, certainly a lot of people have eaten at Peli Peli. You are the founder of that. That's one of your many businesses. Uh, and before we get into your backstory, just how are you doing? Because because I know that we were chatting during commercial break, and even though we haven't been seeing these attacks happening here in Houston, I know that it's deeply affected the Asian American community. I mean, it's 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 heartbreaking. Um, even you know, I think we're all blessed that we live in this great city of Houston. I think we're you know, not to say that you know, racists or people of those kind of values don't live here, but I think we've been insulated a little bit just because Houston's so diverse, and, and people are just kind of at least civil to an extent but it's it's heartbreaking to see what's going around in the country um i was i was mentioning to you my parents still can't grasp what's happening um you know they immigrated here from vietnam and, and, and after the war and they've always looked at this country and it still is as a land of opportunity and, and a wonderful wonderful place to live and so to hear that there are uh, kind of these attacks happening around the country um it's it's disheartening it's it's really hurtful and I, I don't know if we'll ever get to the point where we'll understand it. Uh, and, and you are so right, Thomas, because understanding hate is, there are so many layers there. Um, you mentioned your parents, of course, your parents immigrated uh, to the U.S. while y your mom was pregnant with you um, and moved to Katy at three years old. And that's where you live in Cinco Ranch now. But let's talk about just reaching out in the community. Besides, you know, owning one of our favorite restaurants, Peli Peli, um, it's Thank your you. job too to, to really get into the community and and have that conversation right now you know i mean i think all of us are it's a privilege to live here i'm grateful that my parents had an opportunity to immigrate here as i'm sure that sentiment is shared with every asian that lives here in houston so i think part of it we have a responsibility to not only kind of contribute back to the community that we live in uh, but also you know help our brothers and sisters along the way that that need help and and we live in a great community here in Houston the Asian community uh, is very tight-knit there's a lot of people that really care about everyone's well-being um, just not just from a business standpoint but as a community Thomas, you're such a fantastic example of someone who is living the American dream. We mentioned you are the founder of Peli Peli. You're a family man. You're working as a brand advisor and associate at CBRE. 2015 Houston Business Journal 40 Under 40 recipient. 2016 Houston Asian Chamber of Commerce Entrepreneur of the Year. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Um, for folks in Houston, what is your, your message about getting out, exploring Chinatowns? It's not just Bel Air Boulevard, but also out there in Katy. And what are some other ways we can show support? Support. You know, I, I've lived here since, my family's lived in Katy since 1979, so we've seen kind of the development of not just Katy, but Houston in general. And I don't know if everyone realizes that we're fortunate to be, maybe, I don't know if we're the only one in the U.S., but we have two distinct Chinatowns, and that's, that's amazing. I mean, you have the traditional, uh, original Chinatown, and then when I say Chinatown, that's, that's all inclusive of all the different Asian cultures and ethnicities, but you have a six mile stretch along Bel Air Boulevard, um, and that houses, you know, the mom and pops, the traditional uh, Asian concepts. Uh, and, and the cool thing is, you know, 80% of, I think, you know, the consumers that go there are Asian, whereas we have a new kind of Chinatown now out in Katy along 99 and I-10 that is predominantly non-Asian, and I love it. I'm there every weekend. I'm just, I literally just walk around eating at all the different places because it's so close to where I live. And it's great to be able to experience, you know, Malaysian and Viet Cajun crawfish and Vietnamese cuisine and Japanese cuisine and, uh, um, you know, every ethnicity and just kind of enjoy the food. I mean, I think whether you love Asians or not, I mean, you got to love the food, right? So, uh, you know, for me to be able to travel such a close distance and experience that with my wife is is. Is, is amazing. So much to see, do, and eat. Of course, Thomas Wynn, you are just as much a part of our community as anyone else who lives here in Houston. Thanks so much for Thanks. your time today, and we'll see you very soon.
Appreciate it, guys. Thank and you. And we're going to have a link to connect with Thomas on our website, HoustonLife.tv. All right. After the break, more with Joe Sam, who's hanging out today at the Houston Auto Show. We'll be right back. We are here at the Houston Summer Auto Show. It is an absolutely great experience, and we're getting ready to do an experience right now. My man Benny here, the Jeep Track Manager, you're getting ready to take us up here and show us what people can actually experience here at the show. Yes, sir, definitely. definitely. So tell us all about what we're getting ready to do. Uh, so we're basically going to show off our 4x4, what we call our Trail Ready Track, track Course. Uh, we're actually in a brand new vehicle that just came out for, for a Wrangler. Mm -hmm. It's electric, it's 4, 4 xce well, I'm ready to get ready to go, cause so let's do it. Yeah, let's go. All right, we're getting ready to head up on the track. Now, this is something that was built here in NRG Center, and this is a complete experience. So you really go through all of the trenches to see. Oh, yeah, this is fun. Just how tough these Jeeps are built. Oh, yeah, they're, I mean, people go bananas for these type of vehicles. They no. last long, they're tough. They really are. Tell us why did you decide to incorporate something like this here to really give people a personalized feeling of how it actually feels to ride in one of these Jeeps, especially if you're an adventurous spirit. Yes, I mean, something that you don't see a lot of is stuff like this. The people can actually physically come in, sit down, have a seat, and have an experience of what it tastes of off-roading in. So we're getting ready to go on the bumpy surface right now. So you feel the bumps in here too. And we're, we're just really showcasing just how great this vehicle is. And that's what people get. They get the information and the experience. So I want you to hurry up and go up on this ramp because wow. I want to show them us going up here. It feels like a roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. So we're getting ready to go up on this huge ramp right now that has all been built to give us the full Jeep experience. Now tell people how can they check this out? Uh, as far as once you come in, I mean, you can't miss it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but definitely the four by four helps us out. We're oh, going experience. we are going up. You got wow. your camera to look out. <laughs> this is really, really cool. Benny, I want to thank you for all of this amazing job that you're doing here and giving people a full experience here at the Houston Summer Auto Show. Make sure you guys come out and experience it for yourself. We are going to be giving you all that information on our website, HoustonLife.tv, about pr ticket prices. Courtney and Derek, we just are having a blast over here. All right, Joe, looks like it. Lots of fun. Thanks. After the break, an update to the great shirt debate from earlier in the show. And as we head to break, let's check in with Nichelle Turner for a look at what's coming up on Entertainment Tonight. Hey, Nichelle. Derek and Courtney tune in to ET tonight for Nick Jonas. He's giving us details on the accident that sent him to the hospital. Plus, The Hills, Audrina Patridge is our guest co-host. It's going to be so much fun. That's tonight at 630 right here on KPRC2. But don't go anywhere. Houston Life will be right back. Y'all, the great shirt debate. We are about to reveal the poll results. Scientific, you know, we love a good poll here at Houston oh, yeah. Life. It was an Instagram poll, is that what we did? We did an IG poll, okay. and it's about split, y'all, 50-50. So it's too close to call whether or not I have my shirt on correctly. So the, it has buttons, so I put it on with buttons in the front, and then I thought, I don't know if this is right, so I turned it around, but we called in the experts. Yeah, and I feel like there's really only one person who could definitively answer this question and settle the debate. How about the designer, Hunter Bell? She's joining us now. Hunter, I can't believe this is actually happening. And uh, so you gotta fill us in. How you doing? You look great. Thank you. I, uh, it's a rainy day. I wasn't prepared to be on uh, with you guys, but I got a few text messages and phone calls from friends. They were like, you got to call in. So um, happy to be a part of this. Okay, so I love this blouse. You know, I'm a huge fan of your designs. I'm, I'm seeing a sneak peek of a holiday behind you. Um, so I put this blouse on today, but it, it buttons. And I thought, I think the buttons go in the front. So, and then I, I kept turning it around. So the buttons are not in the front right now, but girl, which, which way? Do you wear it both ways? Which way does this blouse go? Well, we like to complicate things in fashion. We don't want to make anything easy for you. They go in the back. And okay. I love that blouse. And it's, you know, it's reversal. We've seen some people, um, you know, where it buttoned in the front, Jordana Brewster, the actress. I don't know if I'm saying her name correctly. Jordana. Yeah. Jordana. 
Um, from she wore one of our dresses recently, and she wore this silhouette, which comes in a dress, buttons in the front. We'll have to put a, we'll have to send you an image. So I think it's a, uh, it's a twofer. Oh, two I'm with you, girl. You get buttons in the front, party in the back, whatever business in the front, party in the back. Yes. Two okay. Two for the price of one. Sounds good to me. Mallory. My stylist is here. I think she, do, you, do you do buttons in the front or buttons in the back? I think you could do it either way, but if you're going to wear buttons in the front, I'd open it and add a necklace. Ah. Uh. Okay. Well, Great debate know. is solved. Hunter Bell, I love you. Love your designs. I love you. Thank you so much for clearing it all up. <laughs> and you look great in anything. So however you make it is going to be perfect for you. And to your designer as well. It's great to see you both, Hunter. We'll see you in studio. Fingers crossed, hopefully very soon. Both ways. Winning. Okay. Winning. Well, I think that just about does it for us here at Houston Life today, Courtney. Absolutely. Thanks to Hunter Bell and the rest of our guests that zoomed in today. Send it over to Keith and Christine. And I know Frank is standing by, too, with the latest on the weather, guys. You know, Courtney, I think that your blouse looks great. I saw it and I was like, that's a really pretty blouse. Yeah. Cute. I, I would have the same issue. I'd be like, which way? Okay. Well, whatever works. I have turned this thing around about 50 times today. <laughs> yeah, we have no She's idea not if it's done right, but it looks great. Yeah, it looks great. We would have never known. <laughs> we love it. All right. Great to see you guys. Thank you.